Welcome to this first session of the MOOC on Managing Responsibly. In this first session, uh, we will uh, look at the relevance of the materials that we prepared for you, and we will also give you an outline of the MOOC. So we will go to the six weeks uh, of the MOOC, and beyond that we will also uh, share with you the learning objectives, the particular perspectives that we uh, use for this, and we will also talk about the learning approach, which is about the way we think about assignments, etc. First, it's important uh, to discuss the relevance of the materials. So when we think about relevance, we look at it in two ways. First of all, the material is supposed to be relevant for you uh, in your own context. So whether you work as a manager or you're aspiring to be a manager in a private firm or in another kind of organization, uh, then these materials uh, should be helpful in uh, managing more responsibly whatever you are doing. Um, and that's quite important as a, as a relevance of the material. But because we are talking about managing responsibly, there is a relevance beyond that. And that's the relevance uh, for the, uh, the global context, you could say. So when we talk about managing responsibly, we talk about ecological sustainability, about global diversity, about ethics. And these are uh, um, issues that are not only relevant for your immediate context, but eventually they sort of have an impact on the global system. Uh, so these two uh, types of, of relevance uh, we want to look at first. So and to begin with the relevance for your own direct context, there is a little assignment within this uh, session. Uh, and the assignment is to look at the next two slides and I will read them out. And I've, after I've read them out, uh, you can stop the video and you can think how you would act in the situation that is described in those slides. Uh, and maybe you can write that down in a couple of keywords, and later on you can sort of write that up in, uh, uh, in a little text. Uh, and that sort of gives you like a benchmark for where you are at this moment. Um, and then at the end of the MOOC you can do that again, and then you can see how you developed. So the first situation in which you might find yourself, and maybe it's a, a situation uh, that you have actually encountered, uh, in this first situation, a supplier offers to sell you a strategic input for your main product at a price that is 35% below the current price. And when you ask around, the supplier sources the input from a new country of origin with labor laws that have been criticized by human rights organizations. But it's not on any official blacklist or, or under any embargo. So in that situation, what would you do? And the second situation is uh, a situation where your firm needs to expand a production facility. And at a meeting with local citizens, there is division between people who are highly supportive, as it will bring new jobs, uh, but other people are critical because they fear additional negative e impacts, like air emissions and transport causing road congestion. And again, the question is, what would you do? So now we've looked at your, uh, the relevance of the material for your own situation. And these situations are sort of an, an, uh, an enabler for thinking about uh, how the material and how managing responsibly relates to your own situation. And uh, now we go to the wider relevance of this material. Uh, and basically this is about uh, the global context in which you operate. And eventually the actions that you take as a manager in one way or another, they have an impact on that global context. And in the MOOC, we look at uh, four different themes, and these four themes uh, we will now go through. And the first theme is ecological sustainability. So managing responsibly has uh, a relevance beyond the immediate context uh, in which you work, because eventually the actions that you take uh, and the, the managing actions that you take also have implications for what other people do, so also the actions of other people, eventually have an impact on the global system, uh, the global economic system, but also the global natural uh, system. So that's why it's important that we also look at the relevance of the material in terms of its global impact. And for that we look at the, the different themes that we will cover in the course of this MOOC. And the first theme is ecological sustainability. 
And uh, one of the ways of thinking about global impact is to think about the way in which the actions of your organization and yourself and also the clients of your organization, uh, how they impact on natural uh, ecologies. Uh, and you can think about this in terms of uh, emissions uh, to water, to air, etc. Uh, but if you take a little bit broader view, uh, then you can think about this uh, in terms of planetary boundaries. And planetary boundaries is a concept that we will discuss uh, in the second session of the MOOC. Uh, and this notion uh, communicates that uh, we live on a planet and this planet has certain limits. So eventually you need to uh, uh, relate what you are doing to those planetary limits. And of course that's not so easy uh, because your own individual action is only a tiny sort of fragment of the total impact that we have as, uh, as human beings. But still you need to take that into account. So thinking about your actions in terms of the global ecological system is the first way in which you can think about the wider relevance of uh, the material that we have prepared for you. And for the second theme, uh, I would like to ask Sally now to uh, take the floor. Thank you, Frank. So we've been bringing you, and we will be bringing you this MOOC from Manchester, and that's our place, our locale, and that's what we know a lot about. But it's very important for us to appreciate, and we know from the registrations onto the MOOC that a lot of you are from all over the world, and we want you to use that global context in the way you think about the application of this MOOC to your own situations. So, for example, there are many ways of thinking about diversity and globalization and the relevance. Um, and in the economic sphere, we know that uh, supply chains are very important. So anyone that is a manager is managing part of a process within a long supply chain. And therefore, knowing what kinds of mechanisms connect the point of production with the point of consumption is a very important um, element of globalization and diversity, particularly the conditions under which production uh, is carried out and how consumers can express their consumption preferences through that. So that's one way of um, making globalization really important. Another is around context and how that global context is, is very, very important. So in our work on corporate social responsibility, we know from the work our own PhDs have done, for example, that if you look at CSR, corporate social responsibility, in Indonesia, for example, there is a law of corporate responsibility in Indonesia now, and the kinds of products that are produced, palm oil, primarily, um, which shape the context under which responsibility is done as a practice and understood in Indonesia. Likewise, we know that in East Africa, a recent PhD has looked at Tanzania, uh, and therefore we know that the companies, primarily the banks, when they do corporate social responsibility, they orientate it to the, the situation and, and conditions of uh, the local country context, for, exa for example, education or community development, or even support for small firms. So we see straight away that in different parts of the world you will be sitting in a completely different context to where we are in Manchester. And finally I'd like to talk about diversity in the sense of inclusion. So when we start to talk about responsibility, if you can widen your horizons to think about the diversity of actors and their profiles that you wish to include in the deliberations, you might say the stakeholders of the business, but you might also be very concerned, and so you should be, about the diversity of your workforce, about the diversity of people that are included in the processes of thinking about what it is to be responsible. And that way, we believe the more reflexive approach that you will develop through the MOOC and through your own work will have a strong strand about how to include a, div a diverse group of people in your work. I'll pass now to Oliver who's going to talk about ethics. Yeah, thank, thank you Sally. So ethics is another one of these uh, themes. If you are a manager or if you're working in any kind of company, you might actually have experienced situations where you felt um, there was something going on that might not be completely right ethically or morally. So uh, you might have seen instances of, of bribing, you might have seen someone being mobbed or there was instances of unfair treatment. Um, so we can see all of these as ethical issues or problems, but we can also see them as opportunities to do the right thing. Um, and one 
way how this actually connects to the larger context that we've been talking about so much um, is if you think back about the financial crisis in 2007 and how, how it all started, you can actually trace back that whole global problem uh, to one particular unethical behavior. And this would be selling loans to people who you would know that they wouldn't be able to uh, pay them back. Um, so this is what basically um, led into a long chain of, of other effects that caused these huge problems that we've seen. So imagine you would be someone or someone in a group of people who can actually change that behavior, who can, who can do it differently uh, in their context um, and actually avoid this whole problem or at least do your part so that it doesn't uh, come out of what you're doing. This would be a real ethical opportunity and we can see many of these ethical opportunities in what we do in our work. Uh, the next part of the presentation is about around the structure of the course, around the course outline. Um, and the very basic idea that we've taken there is to think about uh, the way how sustainability and responsibility and ethics come together in management practice because the course is titled Managing Responsibly. So if you think back about Frank's example, if you are actually a procurement manager, if you're buying something and there might be a decision where you can um, buy from a new supplier, uh, you might think about sustainable, sustainability for instance, does the supplier possibly, po a supplier possibly pollute a lot? You might be thinking about responsibility, thinking that well, you, you would want to uh, um, be responsible to your own society, to your own country by keeping jobs inside the country. Or you might also think about um, being responsible by hiring other people who are, are in maybe a low income country and helping them uh, in a social and economic way. And then thirdly, well, you might also think about ethics. So these companies or different companies, suppliers that uh, you could buy from might actually be differently good at taking care of human rights. Uh, and you might want to consider that as well. And we've taken those very basic characteristics of how sustainability, responsibility and ethics come together uh, to structure this course. So the second week after this will be sustainability, the third week will be around responsibility and the fourth week will be around ethics and then afterwards we bring them together in week five and six. So I've looked now at um, the different weeks of the course and Sally will talk a little bit more about the different levels that we're addressing throughout these weeks. So in a way we're talking about this matrix structure so that we have a different theme for each week as Oliver has just explained but then really for in different um, proportions or, or different balances we have a number of levels that we're interested in so you can think about your own role as a manager as a manager in an organization or or even a, f a freelance consultant whatever your role is and that role as a manager situates within an organizational level so how do these things come together in the organization? And whilst the individual manager, we may uh, dwell on more in the ethics session, for the organization, we may think more about the responsibility session and also the occupations and functions of different parts of the organization, how they come together to appreciate responsibility and sustainability and ethics at the organizational level. But above that, then you ha also have the idea of networks of organizations and you get kind of clusters of organizations that perhaps come together around an ethical point of view. For example, you might have the alliances that come together around fair trade labeling or um, the Marine Stewardship Council. Or you may have collections of organizations that come together in institutions like the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. So you have networks of organizations that have particular interests that draw them together and what's interesting therefore at that level is what kinds of dynamics bring them together and how that actually operates. So as a manager yourself you're not just interested in your own organisation but you're interested in the linkages with other organisations be they networks or, or supply chains. But then, uh, then the next step, of course, is the whole biosphere. So then the sustainability session is very important for uh, appreciating that the, the systems level, the impact that all of those organizations together have on um, the, the biosphere is very much uh, core to the sustainability session. So there you see the matrix that we have combines the different levels of, of, um, of study that we're interested in that you can think about in each of the assignments and also the different thematic areas. And then right at the end in section six, in session six, we bring that together by looking at a number of interviews that we've, uh, we'll 
uh, undertaken throughout the whole course with practitioners that are out there working at the different levels and according to the different themes. And there in that last session, we will aim to integrate all those things together or ask you to think about the cross linkages and the connections between the different levels and the different sessions so that we don't atomize it all. Really, when you're working as a practicing manager, you have to bring it all together. So this takes us really onto the next point, which is our learning approach within the MOOC. Here we're doing a lot more kinds of activities around assignments, which we very much want you to apply to your own setting. So we're starting the first session. If you have a look at the assignment that's relevant to the first session, we have an overarching assignment, which we'd like you to have a go at in the first session. Um, and that is to think about the application of anything you've heard in this first session to your own context and choose a topic, a situation, and start thinking through how you would actually apply it. And then in the last session, we will be returning to that to see how you might complete that assignment again at the end with the hindsight and with the materials that we've been giving you over the next six weeks. Therefore, we hope that by looking at the difference between your approach to it in the first week and your approach to it in the last week, you will see how your own learning has developed over the six weeks. So that's going to be our learning approach. But also we think people learn better in peer groups uh, and therefore across the MOOC you will be able to identify uh, other people uh, participating in the MOOC and we hope you will find different ways of coming together with other people to share your experiences. So that's our, our main learning approach through the MOOC. So now I'm going to pass to Oliver who's going to give you a bit more detail about the different uh, approaches to learning and the materials that we'll be giving you. Yes, thank you Sally. Um, so every week we do have basically three different types of content. So the first one that we kick off every session with is uh, a kind of documentary style, very uh, easy introduction to the topic where we're typically somewhere outside and relate to the topic to something that we can see there. Um, the second then is a more in-depth lecture where we would talk more about concepts and how these real life things actually relate to the topic itself and how they're translated into uh, a little bit more complicated but very helpful uh, ideas and frameworks. And then in the last uh, piece of content in each week we will have an interview with a practitioner. So this is someone who actually has uh, some contact who applies the topic of the week in their daily work and they will tell us um, how these topics are actually relevant and helpful to what they're doing. Um, so these are the things that you will see in every week um, together with the assignment that Sally mentioned as well. And I think uh, Frank will talk a little bit more about the learning objectives behind that whole structure. Okay. Yes, of course. Uh, so we've given you already a lot of information, initial information about what you can expect in this course. Um, and maybe it's a little bit much, uh, but you will sort of uh, get uh, more into that as you sort of approach the materials each week. Um, for now, I think it, it may be a good idea to summarize all that material in, in two different ways. And the first way to do that is to uh, sort of identify the learning objectives. So these are basically the objectives that we identified as being important for you. And if you think that these uh, objectives work for you, then the MOOC is something that you should definitely check out. Um, and the first learning objective is basically to give you a way into the topics that are central for managing responsibly. Uh, and these topics are uh, ethics, responsibility and ecological sustainability. And what we can do in the course of the MOOC is first of all introduce you to these themes. Um, but of course we, we cannot give you like a, a, a complete course in that. But what we can do is we can give you a lot of information about how to access additional material. So beyond the lecture that we will give you, we will also give you uh, links to websites, uh, suggestions for reading materials. Um, and in that way you can build up your own knowledge around each of these three themes. So the second learning objective is to actually apply this material. Because if it's paper and videos, then it doesn't work. It only works if you apply it in your own context. 
Um, so that's an important second learning objective. And I hope that already by sort of introducing it in the way that we do, uh, talking about the assignments makes clear how we want you to uh, engage with the material. A third learning objective is that you uh, begin to uh, develop an understanding of how your own actions relate to what happens within your organization and then beyond the organizational boundary in the wider global context. Uh, and this is something that we try to uh, bring back as much as possible. And in the final section where we talk about the uh, uh, connections bet uh, between the materials, uh, we will again emphasize that. So individual action, uh, the consequences for the organization and the changes that you may bring about uh, within your organization, and then what happens at the global level. And a uh, final learning objective is that uh, you learn uh, to appreciate and to work with diversity. Diversity in points of views, diversity in cultures, um, because we think that sustainability and ethics and responsibility is not something that we can define here in Manchester. We can't also define it in, uh, um, in New York or uh, in, uh, in Beijing or any other country. Uh, um, it has to be defined in the interaction and the dialogue between people coming from different places, coming from different cultures. So. In the MOOC, we try to give you the opportunity uh, to engage in a dialogue with other people and in that way learn how to actually work with diversity rather than try and get rid of diversity. So those are the learning objectives of the MOOC. And then a second way to uh, summarize all the material is basically by uh, giving you an invitation. And the invitation has two parts. Uh, the first invitation is uh, to uh, work with the materials in the MOOC and talk with other people in your own context about these materials. So by applying them you will probably raise questions because you will be using new concepts, you will be bringing in new ideas and these concepts and ideas they will sort of uh, give other people reason uh, to sort of question you and this is a good thing. Uh, because if they ask questions, then you can explain why you are doing this and how you think you can apply it. And in talking with other people, they can help you how to do that in a better way. Um, so that's the first invitation. Work with this material not only by yourself, but in interaction with other people in your context. And the second invitation is uh, to not only have a dialogue with people in your own context, but also have a dialogue with people that also participate in this MOOC. And this is something that we facilitate. Uh, and basically it allows you to uh, build up a network of peers, other people that are in a similar position, uh, that also have worked with the materials of the MOOC, have applied it in their own context, and you can learn a great deal by simply exchanging your experiences with other participants in the MOOC. And this network, you can sort of extend it very easily uh, beyond the six weeks uh, that the, the MOOC takes. Uh, so this is a network that basically could uh, be a resource for you uh, for uh, the, the rest of your career if you want. So those are the two invitations that we hand to you. Uh, and of course, it's up to you whether you uh, take these invitations. Uh, I think that we would definitely like you to do that. If so, then we see you uh, in the second week and then we start working with these materials.